So we've talked about how our friends, the chipmunks, survive during the winter through a semi-hibernation. And it's not only our friends, the chipmunks, that survive, but also cold-blooded species survive too. What does that mean to be cold-blooded versus being warm-blooded like the chipmunk or like us humans? We are warm-blooded. Does anyone know? Very simply, it means that a warm-blooded organism produces their own heat. So right now, even though it's cold outside, we've got a lot going on inside that helps us stay a warm 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas cold-blooded species do not produce their own heat and their temperature is greatly affected by the environment around them. So what are some examples of cold-blooded organisms? Snakes, turtles, frogs, etc. So behind me in this beautiful prairie, we have some of our cold-blooded friends who also hibernate. Let's talk about the common garter snake. There's probably many of them right behind me and what they do is they sometimes borrow chipmunk burrows and dens and they go deep into the ground where it's warmer and they spend the winter there and they come together with other garter snakes. So they huddle together and their body slows down. So their temperature decreases, they do not eat food, and they actually get moisture from their skin. So that's how our garter snake friends survive through hibernation in the winter. And they will come back out in March or April. And guess what is the factor that brings them out? the sun. So when it's the spring equinox this year on March the 20th and we start getting more sunlight than we get darkness after the equinox and then it starts moving into the summer so we get more sunlight, that's when the garter snakes come out to play. <laughs>